All right, guys, so we're going to uh, work out that fourth question on the exit ticket, um, just in case you missed it. Um, so we are starting with, um, we're going to talk about the water first, right? So I have my equation here, Q equals M cat, but I reminded myself that I'm dealing with all the things that are water, right? So um, when I'm reading my question, right, I have a 134 gram sample of an unknown metal is heated to 91 degrees and then placed in 125 milliliters of water at 25 degrees. The final temperature of the water is measured to be 31 degrees. What's the specific heat capacity of the metal? So what I know first is water, right? I'm going to try to solve for this Q of the water, the heat that the water absorbed, okay? So I'm going to use the mass of the water, which was 125 milliliters, but remember from our um, experience with our beakers and our graduate cylinders that milliliters in water is also grams, right? I'm going to multiply that times the specific heat of water, which I know to be 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then the change in temperature is always the final minus initial. So the final temperature of the water was 31 degrees minus its initial temperature, which was 25 degrees. Okay? So as we type this in, right, and we get a Q, our Q of our water should be uh, 31 hundred joules, right? Our grams cancel and our degree Celsius cancels there, okay? So now that we know that the how much heat the water gained, now we're going to look at the metal and at how much that metal lost. So remember that um, energy is not created nor destroyed, right? And so if I have a heat gained by the metal, that is the same Q that was lost by the metal, but I have to, gained is positive, lost is negative. And so these numbers are always related. So I know the Q of my metal, now using, I'll put my formula up here, Q of the metal, right, equals the mass of the metal times the specific heat of the metal times the change in temperature of the metal. And so um, I know the Q, um, I know the mass of the metal is 134 grams. Um, I don't know the specific heat of the metal. That's what I'm solving for. But the change in temperature of the metal, remember that the change in temperature is the same. They come to thermal equilibrium. And so that's also 31 degrees. But that metal was hot, and it was started at 91 degrees. So I'm going to subtract these. Okay. When I subtract those, I get... Sixty, negative sixty. Okay, but the negative sixty times this one thirty four when I reduce this side um, gives me negative eighty eight thousand and forty. That still times my specific heat capacity, which still equals the heat lost by that metal in joules. So I'm going to divide uh, by eight thousand and forty on both sides. Now my negatives cancel, right? My specific heat can't be negative. But negative 3,100 divided by negative 8,040 gives me a specific heat of the metal to be 0 0.385572139. That's a lot of digits, right? And I don't need that many digits. So because I only have two significant digits, um, I'm going to round this up and record this as 0.39 joules per gram degree Celsius as my specific heat of that metal.